Hello to all our LinkedIn followers, and welcome to today's session on best practices for digital first customer service. I'm David Wasserman from NICE's portfolio marketing team, and today I'll be talking with Vit Horky, one of our top digital experience experts. So welcome, Vit. Hi, David. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Vit, as you know, as I was preparing for today's session, I spent some time Googling the word digital first customer experience, and it's really amazing how many different definitions there are. Some would say it's related to the hardware and software for some of these new cloud companies, while others talk about it in the context of these new online business models. Now, I know, as I said at the beginning, you're an expert across all these spaces. So for our viewers today, can you take a few minutes on your take on what exactly is digital first customer service and what does it mean to you? Uh, sure, David. You know, a growing majority of people no longer prefer to take care of their customer service um, through voice, through customer phone call. They prefer things such as email, live chat, web servers, or social media channels. In fact, today there are more than 30 different digital channels that customers use to interact with organizations. The recent crisis of COVID-19, we've been through has accelerated customers' preferences for digital channels as they as offer they are, them an ability um, to interact in an asynchronous manner during this difficult time. In other words, respond to the interaction at a time that was convenient for them. With all the distractions around them, working at home, health concerns, etc., this was exactly what the customers needed. And just some critical stats that supports this massive trend and demand for digital care. 90% of Generation Z, so people under 25 years of age, use digital channels as their channel of choice, with only 10% using voice. 84% of millennials use digital channels as their channel of choice, with only 16% preferring voice. And 49% of Gen X prefer digital channels as their channel of choice. Even though, and even baby boomers became digital experts uh, during this crisis as they were unable to use their preferred voice channel during, the, during this difficult time. I expect that this trend to continue to accelerate as the traditional brick and mortar way of doing business becomes a relic of the past as organizations look to differentiate through providing exceptional customer service through meeting customers on their terms, which is clearly digital channels. I see. You know, Vid, uh, your comments about, uh, I'll use my own words, this explosion in the use of digital channels that was really driven by the, the COVID crisis. I think it's so important for organizations to understand. You know, for me, myself, uh, my parents are baby boomers, my kids are millennials. And when I look at how their behavior has been changed, again, even my parents used to go into a physical store or call on a voice call uh, for customer service. That's no longer the case. Now they're using text messaging. They're even using social media. Things have really changed overnight uh, for every generation. Uh, just real quick, though, for our audience, you know, we're interested uh, in your take on digital customer service and your use of it in your context. And so today we have a quick poll. You can access it through the post above on our LinkedIn live session today. We'd love to hear your comments and we'll share those with you as we put them together. So back to what we're talking about, Vit. Uh, this issue of, of digital customer service, we'd love to hear more from you about really the things you're seeing as it relates to best practices that organizations are undertaking and the risks to those organizations that choose not to head this direction. We'd love to hear what you think about that today. Sure. So, you know, uh, what digital customer service means really, your ability to connect with customers, how they want to connect and where they want to connect place. And instrument role in your ability to retain them, giving you a faster and cheaper path to adding new revenue. Companies with extremely, extremely strong omnichannel customer engagement retain an average 89% of their customers, compared to just one third uh, for companies with weak omnichannel customer engagement. And organizations committing to transforming their customer experience and leveraging new digital capabilities alongside a human touch are demonstrating huge value. A staggering 91% can evidence um, increased customer loyalty 
while only 84% report increased company profits and revenue. 84% of customers report increased company profits and revenue. And that's, that's amazing. With all these positive benefits of digital, only 10% of companies consider their digital business strategy to be optimized. But we know that the last 90 days has caused businesses to focus 100% of their efforts on digital. So clearly, so clearly the race is on as businesses adjust to the new formal we're living in. For those that don't adjust to this new reality, I would see them having tremendous difficulty surviving in this competitive economic environment we're now in. And interactive survey we took last month of organizations show that 88% of them were interacting with customers through digital channels in the last 90 days. So clearly, the transformation is occurring right before our eyes. And I believe how organizations will deliver customer service will look very different in 12 months from now. Wow. Risk of businesses not moving to digital is poor CSAT, results which will cause significant impact to business results. On the employee side of things, businesses don't keep up with the trends, will find themselves with dissatisfied employees and the associated turnover that goes with that. Yeah, so I think as you said, Vit, clearly uh, the race is on. Things are changing faster in this world than they probably ever have. I want to go back to something you mentioned about uh, the number of channels and about organizations focused on I think you said 30 digital channels. It sounds super difficult for both agents and customers. I think back to the days where contact centers just had voice. And I think for both a customer and an agent, you know, you, you got transferred once or twice. It was frustrating. Now you're talking about 30 digital channels. What are some of the best practices on how organizations should think about really managing all these channels so that both customers and agents have great experiences with each other? In theory, it's simple. Customers want the fastest resolution possible and they don't want it to be difficult for them. And agents are also looking for, you know, to deliver the fastest resolution. That's, that's simple, right? Regardless of which channel your customer initiates the contact with your organization, moving easily from channel to channel will reduce customer effort, drive significant efficiency in your contact center, lead to stronger agent performance, and most importantly, higher customer satisfaction. You know, brands stress and frustrate customers in so many ways, and we all know it, right, from our own stories that we sometimes share with our friends. One of the biggest complaints comes from customers who are forced to channel hop or re-enter their information. You know it as well, right? That's why nearly 50% of customers say they will stop doing business with a brand that frustrates them. Meanwhile, only 32% of those customers will contact the company to complain before taking their business elsewhere. Organizations need to look for a few key things as they move to digital. First, a platform that enables customers to seamlessly move from channel to channel, just like they did in the voice world, except that the same agent remains with them throughout the entire interaction, regardless of channel or minimal interaction passed from one agent to the next. The goal is not to have the customer repeat any information to another agent, and the customer's issue is resolved in a timely manner. So that was one. Second, from an agent perspective, they should have a single user interface, which allows them to manage all their interactions across all channels simply. The UI needs to be smart since all of these interactions are asynchronous. So for example, it needs to be prioritized which interaction that agent should respond to, including, including providing automated guidance on how they should respond, and in some cases, respond on behalf of the agent through conversational AI, which allows the agent to no longer focus on mundane questions and spend their time on pieces of the interaction that require their human touch. So that was second. And third, and finally, the ability to add new channels that customers require 
especially in these times where things are changing so rapidly. Yeah. You know, one of the things we like to do in these segments, Vid, and I'd like to do with you today is really bring some, a real world example to our followers. So they see the technology uh, in action benefiting organizations and their customers. You know, one of the things that uh, has happened in this crisis, it's created a lot of, I'll call it unpredictability in interaction volumes that contact centers have been experiencing. So maybe do you have an example of how an organization recently leveraged all these digital channels to handle that so they could continue to provide exceptional customer service? You know, David, now more than ever, contact center staffs are straining to handle and never increasing call volumes. Hold times are exploding as a result and customers are self-selecting digital channels to avoid the lengthy wait times. I myself, I'm, I'm using Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp for majority of interactions with brands I need to communicate with. You know, and digital channels allows you to cost effectively scale your contact center's ability to accommodate the growing surge in volumes. By activating digital channels, you're providing your customers the channels they need to quickly resolve the reason for their calls. What's more, it removes significant burden from your agents. Agents are able to handle multiple engagements over digital and customers can manage more routine requests such as billing on their own uh, without agent support. Um, over the past few years, I've been working with one customer that I happen to know very well. It's T-Mobile, the well-known mobile operator We've been working with T-Mobile back in Europe, where, I've been, where I'm based. And T-Mobile has um, seen a rapid increase of volumes coming from social media channels in particular over the past five years. And they were struggling with their strategy. Should their normal contact center agents uh, be responding to their customers over Facebook Messenger, Facebook, Twitter, and others, or should they create a dedicated team of specialists? And they have decided to do so. Uh, they have decided to create a small team of specialists that were uh, particularly focused on the increasing volumes of social media, customer service related um, conversations. But the problem was obvious. The volumes over, uh, sent over social media was rapidly increasing. And in fact, it increased five times over the past three years. However, because T-Mobile had been using and following some of the recommendations that we have actually given today, like selecting the right platform, uh, teaching their customer service agents to, to work in omni-channel manner, etc., they have actually managed to work with five times higher volumes without actually adding uh, any um, additional contact center agents to this team. So handling much higher volumes with the same number of agents is possible with the right combination and with the right use of technology and with the right use of the potential of the people that you're having in your call center. Wow, that was a great example of it. And I think it brought the points that you've made to us today uh, really right home. And I think uh, a great example of how digital channels can help all of these organizations in the new world we're facing. I really appreciate you joining us today. It's been a great discussion about best practices for digital first customer service. It's certainly clear that the wave of the future is here and now. Thanks again for joining us. We appreciate it a lot, Viv. Thank you for having me, David. And to all our LinkedIn followers, don't forget to take our poll on your use of digital channels in the contact center. The link to it can be found right in the post of this session. And of course, we wanna thank you for joining us today. We wish you a great rest of the week and look forward to seeing you on our next LinkedIn Live session from NICE. Bye-bye.